Welcome to our weekly Bible study at Bridgeport United Methodist Church. We're grateful that we have this opportunity to share and to study the Word of God. This evening we'll be completing our psalm study. We've journeyed through the psalms these past four months really together. Uh, this evening we'll be looking at Psalm 150. If you would like to get your Bibles now as we complete our study of the psalms. It has been a wonderful journey. We hope it's been an enriching journey for you. Uh, we still have those archived. If you want to go back and look at some of those psalms, you can take a look at those as well. We're going to be looking at Psalm 150. Let's open up with a word of prayer this evening. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to study your word. We're grateful for your presence that surrounds us, for your power that enables us each day to live in your spirit. We praise your name for all of the blessings that you grant us each day. Lord, forgive us for those times in which we might take them for granted. Forgive us for those times in which we complain rather than look to you. We pray this evening, O oh God, that you would enable us to know your love, and in that love we would find strength and comfort and peace. As we study together, open our minds, open our hearts, open our lives, that in all things we might reflect your praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may not be watching it in the evening, even though I said this evening, because that's when we're actually recording the weekly Bible study. Uh, but I look forward to sharing with you in Psalm 150. It really is a psalm, a great psalm of praise, and it's going to tie together uh, one of the major themes that we've looked at uh, throughout this psalm study. As we begin, I've asked Jim uh, to share a song of praise, a chorus of praise with us at this time. So turn with me to Psalm 150. It'll also be appearing there for you to read along with me if in case you don't have your Bible. Uh, under the title, One Word Can Change It All. Hear these words from the six verses of Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is Psalm 150. Well, we've titled this particular study, One Word Can Change It All. And it is a word that has been repeated several times during our journey in the Psalms. And you already know what the word is because you can't miss it in reading those six verses. The word is praise. The word is praise. Thirteen times in these short six verses, that word praise appears. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You heard it in the song. You've heard people say it. If we were reading this psalm in Hebrew, where it says, praise the Lord, you would see hallelujah. Halla is the word for praise. And the rest of that luya is a, is a conjugation of Yahweh. Hallelujah means praise Yahweh. We translate it, praise the Lord. 
So throughout the psalm, we see this word praise appear. That's the word. What's the word? The word is praise. I want to sort of work through not only this psalm, but also the power of praise. Because as I've said, this word praise runs as a thread throughout many of the psalms. Could it be that those of the ancient Hebrew faith knew something that we really need to learn again? Could it be that they knew how important and how powerful praise was? I think they did. In fact, I think that's what sustained them. The Hebrew people, the children of Israel, the ups and downs, how many times were they, were they conquered and oppressed, put in bondage, put in exile, through all of the difficult times that they had, out of those difficult times, and even amidst those difficult times, these words from the book of Psalms continued to sustain them, and the word within the words is that word praise. That's the word. What's the word? The word is praise. And I promise you, it can change, it can change everything. One word can change it all in your life if you will allow it to. So let me just place it out this way. First, I said, what's the word? Secondly, why this word? Why this word? Why praise God, we might ask? Well, I'll answer it very simply. Because he's God. He is worthy of all praise elsewhere, the psalmist says. That's enough. That's the only reason I need. The only reason I need to praise God is because he is God. And he is worthy of praise. I don't praise God just because he does what I want him to do. I don't praise God because he meets my desires or my expectations. I don't praise God because he comes to my rescue when I'm a falling or when I'm in need. To have a genuine, authentic faith experience and connection with the living God means that I praise him simply because of who he is. I've said this before many times. If we only praise God because of what he does for us, think how much that feels like using someone. If someone only turned to you when they needed something from you, how would you feel? But when someone affirms you and loves you just because of who you are, how wonderful that feels. Friends, he is our God. That's why. That's why we praise him. My mom speaks Hebrew. That may be news to her because she's watching this weekly Bible study every week. Mom, you might not know it, but you actually speak Hebrew. Because one of my, my, her favorite phrases is praise the Lord. Now, hallelujah would be the Hebrew way of saying it. But my mom says praise the Lord many times. She, she says it. She shouts it. She sings it. And I am uh, very joyful to say she lives it. She prays for things, and when she receives answers, praise the Lord. Even in the midst of difficult times, I can remember hearing my mom in church, praise the Lord. She spoke Hebrew. Hallelujah, is what she was saying. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he is our God. But in my own faith journey throughout the years, I've always... Uh, tried to emphasize for my own uh, spiritual formation the necessity of praise. And as a result of that, I sort of have these, the, you know how I am with alliteration. I have these 10 C's of praise. Now, I'm not going to share all 10 with you, but I want to share five of them with you. Why praise God? Why? Praise cleanses us. Did you know that praising God has a cleansing quality to it? When I allow myself to just praise the Lord to thank him for his blessings, to be grateful in my heart regardless of the external circumstances, then all of those toxic, negative thoughts that sometimes want to habitate inside of me, they have to go. Why? Because they can't live in the same room with praise. You understand that? Praise has a cleansing quality. And friends, if you need your soul and your heart and your mind cleansed, that is just focused and purified, 
then, then make praise a daily part of your routine and you'll find out that a lot of those negative things that are out there in our culture that are dragging people down now, you'll find they cannot live in the same room with praise. Praise cleanses us. Another one I have in my own spiritual form, praise creates. That's another C. Praise creates. If I learn to praise God regardless of circumstances, new things begin to be created in me. That's part of God's work of new creation. Remember, Paul said, if anyone is in Christ, he is or she is a new creation. Part of the way that God does that is he teaches us how to praise him. Praise has a creative quality in our lives. You feel like you need a new beginning. You feel like something new needs to be created in here in order to get you moving forward or to be strengthened or comforted. Praise is the answer. Another C, praise calls. Praise, the praise of God has a call that comes forth because it calls me, it calls me toward God and it calls me toward who I'm supposed to be living in God. If I'm praising God, then I don't have time to take on any kind of falsity. I don't have time to fake it. When I'm praising God, it's calling me to be who I was created to be. And the more we praise God, the more we will sense that, uh, that call in our own life. Another C that I like to use is praise carries us. How many times the world wearies us down, the burden seems too heavy, what you're carrying seems too much of a load for you. The praise of God can help carry us amidst that time. When we learn in our hearts the power of praise, it's as if God is putting his arms beneath us, lifting us up and carrying us forward. On a song of praise, a prayer of praise, even a whispered breath of praise can carry you when you think the burden is too heavy. And the other one I'll share with you and then you can ask me for the other five some other time. Praise cements our relationship with God. Now that's not one you're going to hear often. But, but I put that in my, for my own spiritual formation. What is it that can really cement, you know, make solid my relationship with God? Keep it solid even when other things seem to be cracking around us? Praise. Praise cements our relationship with God. In other words, that praise helps us to grow stronger and stronger and stronger in our, in our everyday life connection with the living God. So there are some whys for you. Again, you can ask me for the other five uh, of the 10 C's of praise, but that I just wanted to give you a sample of that. Why? Why? Because praise cleanses us, creates us, calls us, carries us, and cements our relationship with God. Why? That's why. What's the word? Praise. Why? I've shared that. So who participates? Thirdly, who participates? Well, notice in Psalm 150, it says, Everything that has breath, everything that breathes, let everything that breathes praise the Lord. And then he goes through all of these different instruments. Let all of the instruments join in. I remember in a retreat setting as a youngster, uh, the pastor who was leading from Psalm 150 said, kids, look at all of these instruments that are mentioned in praising God. The trumpet, the lute, the harp, the tambourine, the strings, the pipe, the cymbals. He said, you are called to praise God. You need to decide what instrument will you be? What instrument will you be for God? Now, he didn't care what instrument we would be. He just wanted us to be an instrument. God wants us to be an instrument of praise in our world today. It reminded me of a pastor friend who thought from Psalm 150, very similar to the person who led that retreat for me. He thought he would give out these instruments to the children uh, during the children's time of their worship service. So he handed out, well, he actually had some, uh, you know, kazoos and things like that. And he handed that out. He had a few tambourines. He had a little horn that was easy to blow. And he had some cymbals that he passed out. And he told the kids, now, kids, we're not going to dismiss you. I want to have you sit right in the front. And as I preach, here's what my friend said. As I preach, every time you hear me say the word praise, you sound your instrument. 
He said some of the older people were a little irritated by the end of the sermon. Why? Because every time he heard, they praise, you'd hear this clanging cymbals and tambourines and kazoos going crazy. And the kids usually, as kids will do, they get a little carried away and extended it a little further than he wanted. But he was making the point that we all have a role to play as instruments of God's praise in our world. Who is to participate? Friends, you and I are to participate. All creation participates. The Psalms are very good at that. All of creation, everything that breathes, participates in the praise of our God. It's easy to sit on the sidelines, especially if we feel we've been sidelined. Let me say that again. It's easy to sit on the sidelines when we feel like we've been sidelined in life. Maybe it's circumstances, maybe it's grief, maybe it's hurt, maybe it's an illness or a condition. And sometimes when we've been sidelined, we don't really feel like participating in praise of God. I will say to you, I've been sidelined for very, at various times in my life. You may feel like during this pandemic that you've sort of been sidelined. Friends, those are the times in which we need to praise God all the more. These are the times in which we need to be saying hallelujah every day. I remember years ago I led a United Methodist Women's Bible study that was out and it was called Hallelujah Anyhow. Hallelujah Anyhow. Right in the face of these circumstances, you and I we are called to participate actively in the praise of God every single day. So what's the word praise? Why? Who participates? Finally, where do we offer the word? Notice the psalmist says, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty firmament, or, or the dome, uh, the, the image of the world at that time was that there was a a great dome that sort of uh, overarched the earth. And we lived under this dome. So really the psalmist is saying, when it comes to where do we offer the word, he's saying everywhere. The entire world, under the dome, wherever God's domain is, which is everywhere. So every moment, every day, every hour, every place, every location... In our friendship relationships, in our family relationships, in our social arenas, where do we offer the word? That word praise? Everywhere. Sometimes it may seem out of place to us. Friends, before we get towards the close of this study, I want to make this very important point with you. This this idea of having praise as a new power and a creative power in our life. It needs to be present everywhere we are. And and so many times it's easy to think there's only certain places that are appropriate. And we'll think that praise seems out of place. For example, sometimes when we're extremely sad or depressed, we think praise doesn't belong there. Because why? We're basing it on our emotions. Friends, praise especially belongs there. In the places that you might not feel that praise belongs... Those are the places in which you need to learn and pray to God to give you the faith to say hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. A colleague of mine some years ago was planning a funeral with one of his families. And as they went through putting together the service, one of the traditional things you talk with families about is, you know, what songs would you like to be shared? And and they bounced around. Uh, the, there, were, there were four boys there, and, and the mom, the dad had passed. They bounced around, you know, some of the traditional ones, how great thou art, amazing grace. And finally, they turned to this elderly lady and said, Mom, what about you? Do you have anything that you'd like for us to say? And this widow, this woman of great faith in church, all of her days. She said, I think I'd just like to sing the the doxology. The doxology? My friend says, you know, 
don't think I'd ever heard of doxology at a funeral. You know the doxology. I have Jim sing it through and hear that echoing in the context of a funeral. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So my colleague says, there they were in the funeral. And they sang the doxology. And there the widow was on the front row in her frail but faithful voice saying the words in the face of the death of her husband. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That's it, friends. That lady knew the power and the place of praise. Sometimes to us, it may seem out of place. But I say to you that praise will help you find your place and enable God to take up his place in your life more and more. One word can change it all. Those of the ancient Hebrew faith, they knew it. They passed it on to us. Friends, will we hear it? Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp and tambourine and dance, with strings and pipe. Praise Him with clanging cymbals, loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May we learn to sing praises to our Lord. I sing praises to our Lord. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name. Your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to your name, O Lord. Glory to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord. Let's close with a word of prayer. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you again for your word. For those of old who wrote the words, recited the words, lived the word. Praise. Help us, O oh God. Teach us the power of praise. Whatever point you're watching this study, maybe that would be a worthy breath prayer for you. Lord, teach me the power of praise. Lord, teach me the power of praise. In the holy name of Christ our Lord, we pray. 
Amen. Thank you for journeying with us throughout the, this journey with the book of Psalms. We will continue Bible studies in a different direction. Go back and take a look at some of the other Psalm studies that we've had as well. Most importantly, we pray that you continue to grow in your praise of God as you grow in your faith. God bless you.